Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for coming here to learn about single parent issues, finances, life insurance, 401k. I'm so excited you're here because this is for you. This is for the single parents. These are things I wish I would have known. Somebody would have taught me, but I'm going to teach you all today now that I work in financial services. So Sonia Gellin Kamenika here, soniagellincomanika.com and the author of 10 Things I Wish I Knew as a Single Parent, where we talk about all things single parents. And today we're going to do a deep dive. Well, you know, basic to deep dive, give you a little bit more information of the new 401k, uh, information for 2024 and we're going to compare it to life insurance and we're going to look at the two and you're going to make an educated decision it's not an either or situation you can have both many employers are incentivized to offer this product to you and they match it there's a lot of things so make sure you watch my previous video on all the new information for the 401k 2024 the new limits the new programs the new hardship withdrawals things that are involved there so Pull up your chair, get your coffee, get your tea, get your muffin. We're going to do a deep dive into the 401k in 2024, the new limits, new requirements versus life insurance. And both are fantastic products. They're not for everyone. You decide what you want. It's not an either or. You can have both. So the number one thing for a 401k plan, it co it's usually withdrawn by your employer out of your paycheck. And it's withdrawn with pre-tax dollars. So you don't pay tax. You get your income from your employer. He withdraw or she, they withdraw the money. You don't even notice it pre-tax. And then you got money saved for retirement. For life insurance, this is you paying for your, get, receiving your income, paying your taxes, and then you pay for the life insurance. So life insurance is after tax dollars. Number two. The 401k has maximum annual contribution limits. I'm going to say it again. The 401k has maximum annual contribution limits and the limits have just increased for 2024 to $23,000. Number two, ba life insurance is based on your income and ability to pay. So you can get a very expensive, you get a million dollar policy and pay $60,000. You can get a hundred thousand dollar policy and pay $10,000, $5,000. It doesn't matter. So there's a lot of pros and cons to both. Number three, a 401k companies can match for employees. So you put in 3%, 6%, 10%. Your employer can also match 3%, 6%, 10%. And it's in their benefit anyway. Otherwise, they're going to be paying taxes on that money. And for the life insurance companies, some accounts have interest and dividends. And that kind of offsets the two. So you get interest and dividends to make the account grow. And, you know, it is after tax dollars, yes, but you do have interest and dividends in certain accounts. Number four. Employees for the 401k, employees choose where to invest. So it can go into mutual funds, index funds, real estate. You get to choose how that money is going to grow. Tax deferred, okay? Number four for a life insurance company. The insurance company chooses the investments. I will tell you, the insurance companies have extreme regulations and they have to put the money in a safe spot. And I will tell you, they have been paying claims for hundreds of years consistently okay so just keep that in mind as well regardless of how it's being um i want to say structured right now it's after tax dollars there's a lot of benefits to having it number five the 401k you can take out a hardship money or emergency funds but it's determined by the irs and you must qualify for it or it actually could be considered criminal if you take it for the wrong reason and don't use it for what you said you needed it for it needs to be proven essentially for a life insurance policy emergency funds are determined by the type of policy so you can ask for the money anytime there's no qualifying there's no application you just say i need it and you get it so that's important too especially for single parents and especially for victims of domestic violence. Number six, a solo 401k has high pre-tax limits. So this is something typically for people who don't have a 401k offered at their companies or for self-employed people. So for a self-employed person, you can put aside $69,000 in pre-tax dollars for your retirement that cannot be touched by creditors. 
and there's catch up money if you are over the age of 50. So the catch up money is an additional $7,500. So you're looking at over $75,000 can be put aside pre-tax and that's pretty, pretty good. It is tax deferred. You will pay taxes on it when you withdraw it later. So just keep that in mind. Number six for a life insurance company. The individual policy can be high. So you might pay a small amount and you have a high policy and that keeps growing. So there's like, you know, there's pros and cons to both. Number seven for a 401k, there are penalties for hardship withdrawal. So keep that in mind. Um, there are things that you can no longer do. You cannot continue to contribute. Um, previously, the penalty would be a 10% fine that the IRS would impose, but they're not doing that in 2024. But you need to ensure that when you take out the hardship withdrawal, you are using it for what you said you're going to use it for, or they will penalize you. For life insurance, number seven, there are no penalties for the withdrawals. You can withdraw or you can take out a loan. So there's a lot of great benefits to both. You just got to know what it is you're getting into, what you're doing. Maybe talk with an accountant first. Number eight, and for the 401k for 2024 has a new hardship withdrawal added to it. If this is for domestic abuse survivors or those who self proclaim that they were victims of domestic violence, they can now take out $10,000 as a hardship withdrawal. That is very important because there are a lot of people who say when they leave this abusive relationship, they have no money. Some people are going into shelters. It's very unsafe and unfair and it prevents you from moving farther away from the abuser and it keeps you, some people stuck in a very bad situation, bad relationships because they have no resources. So there is a new uh, hardship withdrawal category for the 401k 2024. It's called domestic abuse hardship and it's up to $10,000 for life insurance. They don't need to incorporate any sort of domestic violence hardship withdrawal because if you have a certain type of policy, um, e this policy has money is accessible anyway. So as long as you have cash in that policy and you would have put a lot in the beginning, if you have cash in that policy, you can withdraw anytime when you, as needed. If it's a term policy and it doesn't have the cash bucket added to it there are other things for sickness that they will help pay for your medical expenses or things like that you had a car accident or whatever so there are some things incorporated within a life insurance policy that are kind of similar to 401k and they're not penalizing you but at the same time the money is acceptable, but don't ever lie to the insurance company because they will come after you as well. So just be honest, do things on the up and up. I know it's tough sometimes with domestic violence, but know that the 401k new situation has a new category for domestic abuse hardship. And for life insurance, that money is always there if you have a cash, a policy with cash in it. It's there anyway. You can just ask for it. Number nine for the 401k 2024, the minimum, there are minimum required distributions. Now, these have always been the case. That means at the age of 72 and a half, you are required to take out a certain portion of that money. So if you, you know, I don't know, whatever your amount is, 100,000, by the age of 70, I would certainly hope you had a few million dollars saved in your 401k, but you would be required to take out a certain portion of that. I think it's 10, 20% every year. So you would talk to an accountant about how to structure that, what to do with the money, where to put it. Please stay away from crypto. For life insurance, you cannot, excuse me, <clears throat> the IRS restricts the funding of the policy. So you cannot overfund the policy. You cannot put more in a seven year period than you make in those seven years. So if you make 100K a year, you cannot put more than $700,000 in that, in that account for that seven year period. After that, you can add more. So there is a minimum required distributions required by the IRS for the 401k. And then the IRS restricts how much you can put into a life insurance policy. So there's kind of a balance there. For the 401k 2024 number 10, there's a six month period where you cannot contribute after a hardship withdrawal. So you are not allowed to continue to fund your 401k plan for six months after you've taken out a hardship withdrawal. And as I mentioned in my previous video, for, for domestic violence survivors, that's the least of your concern, okay? 
that is not an issue right now. You want to just make sure you and your children are safe. You can go to a, a place, have a home, and not have to put them in a shelter if you can avoid it. And number 10 for life insurance. The money can be withdrawn without penalties up to the certain limit of what you've placed into the account. So you can withdraw it or you can take out the way we always recommend you take out loans. You take out loans. So you've got a lot of flexibility. You've got two different types of policies, both types of plans, excuse me, you got the life insurance and the 401k, and they've got some really great features, both of them. And they have some things that you're really going to kind of rethink. So we're going to do a recap. Okay. Number one for the 401k. 401k is always pre-tax. Before taxes get taken out of your account, the money goes to the 401k. Life insurance is always after tax dollars. After you get paid, after you pay your expenses, then you pay for the life insurance. The 401k has a maximum annual contribution limit. Life insurance is based on your income and your ability to pay. For 401k, companies can match for the employees, and they're even matching in 2024 for those who are making student loan payments. For number three, for the life insurance, some accounts have interest and dividends added to them. For number four, for the 401k, uh, 2024, employees can choose where to invest. You get some, some control there. For life insurance, the insurance company chooses where the investments go, but they are restricted. It has to be in a safe spot. Number five, the emergency funds are determined by the IRS. They give you restrictions on how you can use it, what it can be used for, what the limits are, 1,000 or 10,000. 1,000 right now is what it's saying for financial um, emergencies or 10,000 for domestic violence survivors, excuse me. And for the life insurance company, emergency funds are determined by the policy. It is not something that they're regulating and the IRS is not regulating it either. Um, for number six, the solo 401k has high pre-tax limits. That's the 401k for people who don't have it through their jobs who are self-employed. Number six, an individual policy for life insurance, an individual policy can be high. Yes, it's based on your ability to pay. For the 401k, there are number seven, there are penalties for hardship withdrawal. So keep that in mind. Some things are being, uh, there are no penalties for 2024, but that's if you qualify. Number seven, for life insurance, there's no penalties for withdrawals up to the amount you've added into the policy so far. So if you've contributed 10,000, you can withdraw 10,000. For number eight, for the 401k 2024, there's a domestic abuse hardship withdrawal allowed now. For number eight, for the life insurance, money is always accessible with certain policies. You always have access to it. You just ask for it. It doesn't require any application or anything. For the 401k, number nine, there's a minimum required distribution amount. For number nine, for the life insurance, you cannot overfund it due to IRS rules in a seven-year period. You, I mean, as you get older... It's not as important. So if you get a lump sum of money, you sell your house or something for um, homeowners, put that into a life insurance policy. That's very important. And don't worry about the taxes. Just take out a small portion at a time, pay taxes on that. Some of that will be offset by um, your annual deduction. So just keep that in mind. Obviously, you want to talk to a financial advisor. But if you are a senior and you have a lump sum of money, definitely overfund a life insurance policy because that keeps your money safe okay number 10 last but not least for the 401k there is a six month period where you cannot contribute after a hardship withdrawal and number 10 for the life insurance money can be withdrawn with no without penalties penalty free up to a certain limit or via loans so this is all great information. If you have any questions or thoughts about this, feel free to send me a message. Um, I'm happy to engage and to have a conversation with you about it. Thank you so much again. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Sonia Gallian Kalmanika here, SoniaGallianKalmanika.com, and the author of 10 Things I Wish I Knew as a Single Parent, where we talk about all things single parents, your finances, and we want to make your kids safe by educating you. Have an amazing day.